This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. For a fortnight there, we were forever running to you sometimes. Ask about who ever now you in my backyard turn into good neighbors. Welcome to DBL. That was a clip of Taylor Swift's song Fortnite from her new album, The Tortured Poets Department. Now, everyone's been talking about the album, and even Taylor celebrated some positive reviews she received. She reposted Rolling Stones, a little publication our own Tori Shulman was just in Thank recently. Thank you so much, Cobby. They reviewed that says, come for the torture, stay for the poetry. Taylor captioned the review with the song, quote, and that's the closest I've come to my heart exploding. Oh no, not a pulmonary embolism. <laughs> and while she shared glowing reviews, one publication chose to make their reviewer anonymous for fear of Swifties coming after them. The length review from, or the lengthy review from Pace Magazine says that it's quote, Swift's worst lyricism to date, including irredeemable and relentlessly cringe lines. Now the magazine explained why no one is listed for the review saying quote, in 2019 when Pace reviewed Lover, the writer was sent threats of violence from readers who disagreed with the work. We care more about the safety of our staff than a name attached to an article. Um, so how are we feeling about um, these reviews? Um, I know, Tori, you're a big fan of yeah. this body of work. And how are we re re feeling about the idea of anonymity behind the review? So first off, I don't like love this album. It's not my favorite one. The reviews have been a little bit mixed with it saying that Jack Antonoff, her producer, she's used for a lot, a uh, long time. It's sort of, the songs all sound sort of similar. The chord uh, progression is similar and I do hear that. It's a synth pop kind of breakup kind of album. So I understand that you're allowed to have criticism of Taylor Swift. What I think this brings out is the violence of the fandom, the armies, the uh, Bay Hive. These have become something different and I think they've become a bit weaponized. And I think at some point someone's going to end up getting somewhat hurt. Um, I agree with Pace Magazine. I think free press should be allowed, opinions should be allowed, and they protected their uh, journalists, so good on them. I just think the fandoms are getting out of control. Am I wrong? No, I think you're completely right, Tori. And I do think it's amazing, and it's what's made her such a powerhouse, is that people love her, right. they love her art so much, and she is so talented, otherwise she wouldn't be where she is at all. But people do take it to another level of extremity, like threatening lives. Yeah. And I mean, it's okay, guys, to love Taylor Swift and some people not like a few songs. Right. It's okay. But I also think it's hard for Taylor Swift because, well, I say hard, I mean, she's so talented. On one album, there's 30 songs. 30 yeah, songs. Yeah, right. I wish she'd made 11 Those good tracks. Make 11 or 12 right. and they're like you know out of those 11 or 12 they normally release maybe three right whereas Taylor's concerts are like four hours long and she will sing everything which is amazing if you're a huge fan but it's not gonna you can't have a banger for 30 songs mm -hmm. every single one it's I never mean, it's been impossible. done and you know if we don't have reviews Erica then w where are we? Are we in North Korea where you can't say anything about the emperor for, for literal fear that something will happen to your family? That's where we are. We're talking about art. So your mom was a docent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you ever decide to follow in her footsteps, you have to go through every painting and say, this is the greatest painting ever and there's no discussion. This is the next one. This is the greatest painting ever and there's no discussion. <laughs> Do you guys understand Just, what you're yeah. doing? You are attacking art. The same way I guarantee that you argue that the right goes after art and free expression and free choice. If we have to say everything is great, here's some fun facts, kids. That means nothing's great. Nothing is great. Is great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, well, Al. I think that we're seeing the pendulum gradually swinging and hopefully it's in a redirection of balance because when you think about the genesis of a lot of these fandoms, it was because these were artists who were publicly humiliated and persecuted. Mm. And a lot of people came to their defense because they saw something in them or their artistry that resonated with themselves. So to attack a Taylor Swift or a Beyonce or whoever your person might be was considered a personal attack on them. And they became stronger and they became more emboldened. And let me just say this, it's not as though the idea, it's like with any group, there's going to be 
the fans, and then there's going to be extremists. Right. And I think it's really important that you separate those two because not everyone is making death threats. You know, some right. people just really resonate with the music and they want to go to every concert. Yeah. So and, and I do want to say this before we move on because I think it's important. Uh, I'm going to tell those fans that maybe have found themselves given death threats, and I'm going to ask them to evolve. And it happened with me. I was watching, you know, I'm a big football fan. Ohio State, Michigan was playing a couple of years ago. And a player from the other team got hurt. And I was like, they were really having a good game against us. I was like, yes, you know oh. what I'm saying? And they took his helmet off, and he was like a boy. He was like mm. 18. And right then I was like, it's like my son's age. And I'm like, I felt terrible. Like, I still can feel as I'm talking about it. And I hope that they read this and, and feel bad and change because sometimes that's one of the things that causes you to change is when you see yourself from the outside and you're like, I don't like who I am right now. So just do better. A lot of reviews. Beautiful. It's okay. It's, yeah. a, it's a good thing. Thanks for sharing that. That was a good. little fun fact. That was Evolution. Good. Yeah. Well, Victoria Beckham celebrated her 50th birthday on Saturday in London. Along with the family, many celebrities were in, in attendance, like Tom Cruise and Eva Longoria. But everyone is talking about a surprise reunion at the party. Watch. David Beckham captured that epic karaoke moment from the Spice Girls. It was the first time all members had all been seen together in years. You know the best, oh, go ahead, I'm so sorry. No. Well, the best part about this too is when Beckham first saw all the Spice Girls when we were noticing them, he looked at the TV and he said, see that one in the black dress? I'm gonna marry that one. He did. And he did, mm -hmm. and he married Posh. And I think that's great to see them back all again for him, yeah. to be Ooh. reminded of that. It's a, I, just, I, I really like, after seeing the Beckham documentary, mm -hmm. I'm much more into their couplehood. Yeah. <laughs> I like them. Well, yeah, I mean, well, we could go on and on about the Beckhams, but I just, this reminded me, remember last year, um, I was in New York, and I came back and I was like, the craziest thing happened where I was at this like random party and I didn't know, like it was maybe 25 people and I was there with my uh, my bonus brother and all of a sudden they were singing karaoke and everyone started singing Prince, like I could like cry right now thinking about it. They were singing Purple Rain and I realized that like half the people in that group were people from his band. Oh wow. And it was like the most like oh. electrifying thing. Like I, it was so out of body and I just thought like, wow, like all of these people share this experience and like with this love and this person. And when people have made it to the pinnacle of success like that, like, you know, the Spice Girls and you're coming together and it seems like such a innocuous thing, but like, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Like it's palpable. Yeah, they changed the world. Yeah, and rest in peace to Prince as well, since I brought that up, <laughs> it was seven years yesterday. Um, coming up on DBL, the captivating photos in a, in a book all about empowering girls and women we're talking to the author of Force of Nature. And we're also talking all about the musicians who made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's up next.
Welcome back. Who are this year's inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, here's a list of, or a little taste of some of them, if you will. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way. I'm searching for a real love. Someone set my heart free, real love. Sometimes I find this better to be somebody else. Oh, yes, this lady's night, and the feeling's right. This year's class includes the iconic Cher and Mary J. Blige, wow. also Dave Matthews Band Hi. and Cool and the Gang, we just saw there. Also on the list is rocker Ozzy Osbourne, who is 75 and has been performing for more than 50 years. And the rock band Foreigner, best known for I Want to Know What Love Is. I love that song. <laughs> Next, guitarist and singer Peter Frampton, who made the guitar talk 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 box even more famous. Mm -hmm. And lastly, a tribe yeah. called Quest. <laughs> what happened to Dave Matthews? Yeah. Hip hop music. <laughs> so what do y'all think? Anybody that you're surprised is on the list, isn't on the list? Steph, what you think? Oh, I was happy to see Cher. I feel like she deserves it. It's a long time coming. Are you shocked coming. she wasn't already in? Yeah, I actually was. When I saw it, I, was, I couldn't believe that she already wasn't there. But when you look, whenever they indict someone, it's someone who's been around for a long, long time. Like, all those songs are at least 30 years yeah. old. Yeah. So, you know, just to speak on what Steph is saying, to be eligible or a performer group to be inducted, they have must have released their first commercial album 25 years ago. Yeah. Okay. So, just to... Because there were some that were snubs, like Sinead O'Connor. Yeah, so mm. some people were uh, Sinead O'Connor, Lenny Kravitz, Mariah Carey. Mm. Oasis yeah. was uh, I feel like Oasis is still in. too young. They're Could still be. a bit young. I just got to give it up to the ultimate comeback queen. Mary J. Blige. Yeah. I mean, Mary J. Blige, for all practical purposes, should not be even a subject in the headlines. <laughs> that woman has been through so many setback seasons and has come back and been very public about it. Like from the whole thing with when she was first coming up with the situation with one of her exes, um, you know, very public, volatile situation. She turned that around into new music. She thrived from it. Then she came back. She ends up married to a guy who's managing her career, took everything from her, and she said, I don't need you. And came came back like the idea that we constantly get to be a part of her comeback journey is such a gift like I find it to be the biggest gift so I'm glad that she that. made it I'm glad Dave Matthews made it I know I'm a little bit a white girl talking about her own it I think but it's I've seen more concerts of Dave Matthews than I can count and I wow. don't love I don't have good taste in music but I think Dave Matthews reminds me of spring and summer and high school and the memories that come back he's not hard rock but he's got a just a sweet tone that I'm very excited for he's an amazing musician first I, guitarist, I just yeah. have to say obviously uh, Rob our cameraman and I are very excited about Tribe Called Quest totally. one of the baseline groups of hip-hop and just kind of a different kind of sound when hip hop was kind of transitioning from battle rap, break dance rap, to just kind of like these kind of esoteric rappers that were talking about their uh, situation. But I do want to also give a shout out to Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, she does not get enough love. She fell on the sword and she lost her career for something she believed in. Mm. She was mocked on SNL. I don't know if they've ever uh, apologized for that, but if they haven't, shame on them. Shout out to Sinead O'Connor, a true pioneer who lost her son, yeah. lost her career, and lost her life too early for something she believed in, and we should all be so lucky to stand for something. Mm. Mm -hmm. well Thank said, you uh, for that, Elle. Yeah. Coming up on DBL, we're talking with the author of a book filled with powerful photographs celebrating girls and women everywhere.
Welcome back. For years, Kate Parker has been using her camera lens to capture moments of happiness, triumph, and sadness. And now she's capturing stories of girls and women using their voices. Earlier, we spoke with her. Take a look. Please welcome Kate to DBL. I gotta, I gotta just show off the cover of your book, Kate. This is a cool cover. Yeah. This is a powerful cover. It's awesome. I love it too. Your new book, Force of Nature, right here, baby, uh, which I love, is your fifth book. But you chose an old photo of your daughter Alice as the cover, and I'm reading her quote here. It says, sometimes I have to yell really loud to make sure I'm heard. Alice says, age four. Oh. Why did you choose this particular photo of her? Oh my gosh, that photo is, uh, it's one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. And Alice is almost, she's 15 now, wow. so it's an old photo. And um, I just loved that the, the space she was taking up. I loved that she didn't care what she looked like, that she didn't care how loud she was, she didn't care that her hair was wet. And that, that feeling, I remember looking at the photo and being like, it's been a very long time since I felt that way. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to serve as a reminder to us as women and also girls that there's these moments that we feel like we can, like we are powerful beyond what we think. And uh, so I just, I was, for me, it was like, I made the book basically around that photo. That's Incredible. fantastic. Yeah. And the photos featured with the stories, uh, let me tell you, anybody, whether male, female, I feel like it can uplift and motivate everybody. Uh, you dedicate this book specifically to all the girls and women who have ever questioned using their voices. And then, to my point, you feature lots of photos of the younger generation. How did you find these girls? And did they come up with their ideas for the photographs, or did you? Um, that's a great question. It's sort of a mix of both. So there are some stories I hear about in the news or I read about that I track those girls down. And then there's other girls that I, I just want to make sure, you know, that I, I want there to be a mix of aspirational and like inspirational girls right. in the book. And I feel like, honestly, everyone has a story of when they use their voice. Um, but for me, it's making sure that there is enough diversity in the book and that so every girl or anybody picking up the book finds someone that they can relate to, somebody that, they, that looks like them, that maybe has a similar story to them, that inspires them. The girl covered in mud in her snow white outfit. I know what you're going to say. Oh. Did you see the girl covered in mud in her snow white outfit? Oh, I was going to say the girl with the baseball cap yeah. with the eyes yes. reminded me of that National Geographic Black photo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Girl. Oh, I did yeah. too. Yeah, I'm, too. I'm peeking over at your photos right now. It's beautiful, beautiful. But your book also profiles women who have overcome extraordinary obstacles. And one of those <laughs> stories is about a woman named Elizabeth. Can you tell us about your experience photographing her? Sure, so Elizabeth was one of those girls that I had read about her story. Um, and Elizabeth is um, a, she was, I read that she was about, this is Elizabeth right here, she's valedictorian of her college. Um, and she gave her valedict victory speech um, through an assisted communication device because she is a non-speaking autistic girl. Wow. And I was just like, what an incredible person, an incredible way to showcase how we use our voices. And I just found her, like completely, like just a hero of mine. Really, mm. really amazing girl. Amazing. Kate, before you go, we wanna ask you about this particular photo that we're showing right now. It's nine-year-old Marina. You say she got very vulnerable with you. Can you tell us her story? So Marina's quote um, in there is, so I've actually known her for years. She was so a classmate of my kids. And um, I took the photo of her because, I mean, she's in a rat thing. Like, she has these gorgeous eyes, a beautiful girl, um, and just, like, the sweetest soul. And then when I asked her for a quote for a book about using your voice, her quote said, um, in this photo, I am doing everything I can to not bob my head or move my or have my tics because she has Tourette syndrome and she wanted other kids to know that it's okay and that it's not something to make fun of. And I just, Aww. I had no idea. And when kids, um, especially at this age, you know, when they're in school and if they put something out there about themselves that's vulnerable, I am just so in awe of their courage. Mm. And um, Marina um, was just a really great example of that. Mm. She says, I'm just a regular wow. kid who has Tourette's. Wow. Yeah. Kate, yeah. you are, let me tell you, you're doing the Lord's work right here. I can't wait to share this book with my daughter, Sophie. 
thank you for being here and sharing just a few of the incredible stories from your book. DBL Nation, you can get your copy of Force of Nature and Kate's other books on Amazon. Thank you again. We'll be right back. Very thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Welcome back. Want to have whiter teeth but don't want to deal with the messy strips or sensitivity that goes with it? Well, you're in luck. The brand that brought you Power Whitening Gel has created New Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel with 33% greater whitening power. Effective tooth whitening can be achieved at home by simply adding the Pro Whitening Gel to toothpaste every time you brush. No change in your routine, no extra downtime, no effort needed. In a clinical study, users saw an improvement of up to eight shades after using the gel for 30 days. Smile Actives is safe and effective and will work even on crowns, bonding, and dentures. Order today for a special buy one, get one free offer. Don't wait to get your brighter, whiter smile. Call 1-800-700-4040 or visit smileactives.com today. Mm. Before we go, check this out. 
Country singer Luke Bryan took a tumble on stage during a concert in Vancouver. Luke was walking across the stage when he slipped and fell on a fan's cell phone. He got up and seemed to be okay. He even joked about the mishap. Sort of. Watch. Did anybody get that? <laughs> it's okay. Right hey, uh, my lawyer, my lawyer will be calling. Yeah, I would. Your lawyer should be calling. Yeah, that's a that's something he could easily win and hopefully start a precedent of stop throwing things on exactly. stage. Stop doing it. Exactly. Sue, that'd be a bad look. I feel like so he's so got to. nice. Yeah. I wish Cotty would have done something when it was her. <laughs> we'll yeah. be back tomorrow, same time, same place. That's.